Hi everyone, Charlene Bauer, Ladies Off-Road Network, and today is day eight of the 12 days of giving, and we are in big red in a random parking lot. <laughs> like I said, I'm going to take you to different places you just never quite know. We do have a Christmas tree, and I was hoping that the lights would turn on already. Like, how can they have this big Christmas tree out there and not have any lights on? I just don't get it. Uh, it's a little bit brighter of a Christmas tree when the window is down, but it's like, I don't know, 65 degrees out there. So we had to roll the window back up. I had the heat seater on and everything. It's freezing here in Arizona right now. I'm sorry, snow states. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so what's the weather like in your neck of the woods? Tell me all about that. Hello, hello. Here we go for day eight. We have a lot to chat about tonight, actually, and, um, and we'll get going. So for those of you who are just joining us just really fast, every single night we give away a gift from under the tree, which I did not bring with me. So we're going to do two gifts from under the tree tomorrow night. Yep, that's what I forgot. I knew I was forgetting something when I walked out the door. Uh, we also are giving away t-shirts to people that are saying hello, 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 and being engaged with what we have going on here because we have a lot going on. I did forget the gift under the tree, but I did remember the mailbox. It's right here. You're not gonna be able to see it, and I probably shouldn't have even put stuff in there because look, it's knocking the tripod. But the mailbox is here. Probably should have thought about that ahead of time too. Well, we'll have to dig into that in a minute. Yeah, all kinds of logistics when we start playing around outside the office, isn't there? Um, and then tonight's big topic, every single night we've been talking about 2020 plans, our big topic of tonight is actually our adventure. Well, one of them anyways. So tonight we're going to talk about our East Coast adventure, and tomorrow night we are going to talk about our West Coast adventure. Uh, last week, I mean, we've been every single night for now eight nights talking about all of the programs that we have going on. Uh, the resolution, this is the one that's hot right now. It is open. It's ready for you guys to get involved with. Remember, everybody knows how to read backwards now, right? It's a new talent that we have at Ladies Off-Road Network. So how to work on your 4x4, 20 how-tos, 10 weeks, uh, big prizes, convention, um, entries, all kinds of things. Three people will go to the convention that are part of that top 20 group. So that's Ladies Off-Road Resolution. Dot com and you guys can sign up for that right now through December 31st. It will start on January 1st. No questions about that one. We talked about the challenge. We talked about the scavenger hunt. We did our monthly giveaways, uh, impact networking, 12 days of giving and cookies and cans. We talked about Bauer Academy and the different showrooms and education. Uh, then over Saturday, we started talking about where we're going. Those were all the online pieces. So now where we're going, VIP experiences. Uh, last night, we talked about where I'm going to see you, at, close to you. Tonight's the East Adventure. West Adventure will be tomorrow. We'll start talking about some garage takeovers, our leadership to SEMA, uh, Road to Leadership and SEMA, which is our um, chapters conversation. And then on Friday will be the big night. It'll be the convention. Um, I'm also going to say that on Friday, I'm going to wait until Friday night. And Friday night, I will open up the adventures, um, the two adventures for sure, and the convention for you guys to put your name in on. Uh, that's a $100 deposit minimum. And then you can get that started and going. The others, the VIP experiences, if you're doing King of the Hammers, you should already be in touch with Kathy Hill. If you're wanting to do Easter Jeep Safari, same thing. And then uh, the others, we have a little bit of time to get them all sorted out. So that is happening on Friday night as well. The two adventures and the convention will open so that you guys have an opportunity to participate in that. Um, something that happened this weekend, we're going to talk about a few different things here really fast. We're going to clean up some really clean up a lot but just talk about a few things that have happened over the last couple days 
and uh, one of them is this. So this weekend I got to see Shelly from Four Low Magazine. You guys are familiar with the magazine? You guys have seen it around our world before. But one of the coolest things that she said, she's like, Charlene, did you see you were in the magazine this month? And I'm like, no, I haven't been to my P.O. box in a long time, which I still haven't even been there. So <laughs> I have another magazine waiting for me. But she handed me one. She's like, look at this, you're in the magazine. So this is a very special picture to the three of us. Uh, that's Shelly, myself, and Barbara Rainey. And the very first one we took was in 2011. We were actually at a We Rock event. And um, this one right below it, we try and do it every single year that we see each other at the Hall of Fame. And this one right below it was this year in 2019. I need to go back. I think we have like three or four others that match this. And we always try and like remember which way we're supposed to stand and everything. It's super, super entertaining. Um, but what I really want you guys to see is what this says. And Shelly is exactly dead on. And this is what Ladies Offer Network is as well. And what I'm trying to make sure that we have a space, right? So did, did you find your tribe this week? Or were you even looking? I guess we all are in this tribe. Like we love what we do. We love this off-roading world. And the first paragraph is, as adults, it's hard to see what we're missing. We have a group of friends. It's small and tight. We struggle to think we need new friends or more friends, and do we? And she goes on to talk about how we do need new friends, right? We can always use new friends. And we want new friends as part of our circle. But then you look at that other piece of the circle that you have and that one circle of friends, all you have in common with them is your work or your this or your PTA or your kids or something along those lines. And do they have a deep care and a deep meaning for you? And I think that that's something that's really interesting about our off-road group is, yeah, we definitely have something in common, which is our off-roading skills, but I think that there's a deeper piece to that. And so we're very lucky that not only do we have this hobby as something that coordinates us together, but we also have a lot of care. And I think you guys that have been to the convention absolutely know that and have been able to understand that and be a part of that. And that's what keeps you coming back. And that is what I appreciate. And that's like a core to Ladies Off-Road Network that I've worked really hard to make sure that we instill. But at the same time, I have to say, it's not just about me. It's about you guys maintaining that, right? I can only say so much that, hey, this is the, this is the integrity that I want Ladies Off-Road Network to have. But you're the ones on the day-to-day -day basis that upholds that integrity. And um, this is just one of those moments where, you know, we're very lucky to have the people in our world and we all travel and work like massive amounts of hours. But when we see each other and when we get to chat with each other the three times a year or the couple times a year or whatever it happens to be, uh, that's what matters. So uh, don't forget to give care to everybody in your circle everybody in your circle. There's a lot of need for care right now. The holidays is always a challenging time. Um, but also recognize that you guys have a very strong tribe here as part of Ladies Off Road Network. And I'm really proud of that. And I hope that you guys are as well and take that truly to heart and make sure that as you guys do travel or have these opportunities that you um, pay attention to them and take advantage of them. Um, so with that, we're going to talk about three event things, uh, cleaning up, cleaning up just a little bit. I'm super excited. Like I got a lot done today. Yeah. We are back on the laptop. So watch out ladies. <laughs> um, three things that I want to clean up first and foremost, cookies and cans. I've been avoiding all of your guys' questions. Uh, I've been trying to work in the background on getting cookies and cans going. I am canning cookies and cans. We're done. Canning cookies and cans. I'm not going to fight it anymore. Um, it was it was a battle from the very beginning. There's a lot of elements going into that. If you want to call me, I'm more than happy to tell you all the elements that went into this decision. Um, frustrating is one word I would use, and I'm sure it's from both edges, but the frustration, I don't know where it comes in, but we're just going to can it right now. <laughs> all right, so no cookies and cans. 
if you had a group going, if you already kind of told them that you're going to do something, if people are coming somewhere, I mean, we didn't market anything. So if you already have a group that's getting together, feel free to get together, talk positive talks about 2020, and let's be successful. With that being said, we're also going to change the change the game right now. Okay, we're rotating this game right now. So we are taking an F for cookies and cans in December of 2019. However, we are not going to take one more F in our networkings or our cookies and cans in 2020. And with that, I need your help. Okay, so by Friday, which is in four days, we got four more days of this by Friday night, please have your January networking event paperwork turned in by Friday. If it is not in by Friday, we are not having a networking event in your location, period. I'm not playing anymore, you guys. I have deadlines on these and I need it to happen, all right? Um, those deadlines are really important so I can get that marketing done for you. It takes me eight plus hours in order to do everything and I want you to be successful out there, but you have to help me be successful too. So this Friday is the networking event deadline for January. If you go to ladiesoffroadnetworking.com, networking.com, You'll be able to see the form that you have to uh, submit, and then you have to text me afterwards. Now, one of the challenges that we just had with cookies and cans is supposedly a bunch of people submitted them, but I never got them. So I'm gonna be very on task with you guys texting me that you sent those in so that I match those texts with what is actually coming in, okay? So very important moment to that as well. With that being said, next week I should have everything up for January. That gives us three to four weeks in order to push it through and we will be good to go. If you go to our calendar, ladiesoffroadnetwork.com slash calendar, you will also see where I today loaded every single one of the networking weeks for 2020. So you can plan right now on what the weeks are for the networking events. You will also see the Wednesday before that networking event is now the networking deadline for the following month. As an example, January networking week is going to be the 20th through the 23rd of January. The deadline for February's networking event is the Wednesday before on the 15th. This gives me two days plus the weekend, however that falls into my life, uh, to be able to get all of that information back uh, sorted and back out so that when you guys have your networking events the next Monday to Thursday you already have the information out people can register for it etc etc you can talk about it and this is gonna set us up for success right now uh, we didn't have a successful run necessarily at the networking events this year uh, and it all goes down to scheduling right that's all the scheduling scene so the Wednesday before you have a networking deadline the very next week everybody has their networking events that gives you an awesome opportunity in order to be successful of course I did them also on a Wednesday so our live at 5 on Tuesdays you will get that final ding 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 tomorrow is your deadline ladies stop procrastinating that's the word <laughs> stop procrastinating and get it done all right, so that's all on the calendar right now. Every single one through 2020 is loaded up on there. Um, so that's pretty exciting. So that's, uh, I'm sorry about cookies and cans this year. I will bring back up tomorrow night when we're back in the office that we did do the trail training give back project. That would be something that we should really focus on and hit it hard in this last little month. And I think that would be really great um, to help people. And that will be our give back. But we're going to get 2020 underway, right? We're good with that. So we're canning cookies and cans for this month. We are walking into January super strong. 
by Friday of this week, I need all of the networking events paperwork in for January so I can get that up and out and everybody can start planning. And then you already have all of your due dates for the 2020 networking events and the weeks of which the networking events will be there. Uh, nothing else has changed past that, okay? But I will not take one after the due date. It's just not going to happen. You're just going to end up having one the next month. That's just how it's going to go down. All right. Uh, as you guys can tell, there's a lot going on. So help me help you. Um, next topic. Next topic. Next topic. Let's do the wilderness first aid. I sincerely appreciate you guys last night on the wilderness first aid. Everybody still yes, yes, yes to that. Uh, I watched the entire uh, show last night so I could see exactly what I was saying and how your comments were falling in. And I really appreciate the feedback on the wilderness first aid. It feels like to me that this is a go. And so I emailed uh, the guy that I was working with this weekend and said, okay, you know, here's the video, here's the start time on it. You watch it too. But I feel like everybody is on the gas with this plan and everybody wants to do it. Uh, so he is working on a curriculum for us right now to add that third day in. But in the, in the mix of it, I think I answered everybody's questions last night that yes, we are, um, you get two days worth of in classroom in their facility, uh, education, which does give you a certificate. Okay. Then the third day is us going out and being very successful and actually executing it because I love certificates too. We all love certificates, but if we can't use that knowledge, when it, something happens, when we're out in the middle of the wilderness, it's not going to do us any good. And I'm just as guilty of feeling that way, right? So I want to do this just as much as you want to do this. Uh, again, the class is $2.95 for three days, $2.95 for three days. And that will be uh, non-discounted. That's something that we will go directly to them. And then I did look into the calendar. We're working between the two dates. Uh, to be honest, both him and I are leaning towards the June date. And... Uh, we'll get closer to that though, and hopefully by the end of the week. And then I did look up some Airbnbs and had some uh, good thought process on all of this. So I think it'll be about two hundred and fifty dollars if you want to invest in the housing and food package as well. Which that's Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night because it'll be a full day on Sunday. If you want to peel out on Sunday, that's fine. Uh, but I will commit to staying on Sunday night so people can leave on Monday if you'd like. Uh, so that will be that type of deal for that as well. And that will cover all your food and housing for, you need to come in on Thursday because it's going to be an early start on Friday morning. So Thursday, Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night, four nights. Yeah, four nights. <laughs> and all the food to cover that as well. Um, and we're staying in a fun house and it's always entertaining. Uh, I will tell you from taking this class in the past that Saturday night or the first night, which will be Friday night, Friday night is a no joke night. You are studying. This is not going to be a party night. Let's go back to the house and party. Let's go out to dinner. Let's do this. Let's do that. It is a study night. You need to get that studying done. You need to read the book. You need to be ready to rock and roll for the next day. This is a class. Uh, the second night, I don't think we're going to have that feeling Saturday night. We'll have more of a casual atmosphere. We'll have dinner at the house. Even the people that aren't staying there can go from there uh, and then go into Sunday. So that's kind of the plan there. It's uh, working its way out, but I'm really liking it. So thank you. Thank you for everybody's input last night. And we're going forward with that plan. All right. Speaking of plans. Uh, I'm going to, uh, we're going to talk about the locations for last night's plans, right? Uh, the locations for these three day events. Uh, I really, really, you guys understand how much I struggle, right? Like I want to be everywhere and some nights I can't be, or some days and some ev like, yeah, I can't be everywhere. Let's just be real about this. So I can't be everywhere. Dang it. Um, but I want to be. And so I'm going to say thank you to Wendy because Wendy this morning, I 
was out running around and I got this email and I looked at it and I read it and Wendy had a brilliant idea on her email. So I immediately called her and I'm like, okay, so what are you thinking? Like, let's talk this out for a minute. And probably what, Wendy, we were on the phone for a half hour, 45 minutes, maybe an hour. And we talked through like three or four different ideas. And by the end, uh, we pretty much came up with a plan and I'm sticking to the plan. I like our little plan. So here's what Wendy and I came up with, and I appreciate Wendy a lot for this. We're going to call it the Battle of the Towns. Battle of the Towns. Essentially, what's going to happen is I'm not going to pick where we're going. Well, not all of them. There's a couple logistically that we have to go to or that I need to go to or that it's just like we're right there, so why would we not? But I want to know who feels and who wants to benefit from their membership the most. Like who is on the gas, all right? So what's gonna happen in this week, in the next couple days, uh, I'm going to put together, I don't know, 30, 40 different locations that are gonna work great. So they have foil parts, they have a hotel that will host us, they have a bowling alley, they have all the needs that we need uh, within reason. So we're gonna have about 30 to 40 different locations that are gonna be available for you to bump up. Uh, for those of you who have been around for a long time and you've been part of our challenge in the past and we had the votes of confidence, it's going to look like this. So each town, let's use, uh, I don't know, let's use New Mexico and Kansas and Phoenix and Las Vegas and Southern Cal and Northern Cal and Dallas and Orlando, each town is going to have its own little graphic, okay? Your own little graphic. Underneath that town, underneath that graphic then, each person that writes something that says, we want you to come, or this is the wheeling area that we can go to, or this is something that would be really fun for us to go do on our tourist day, anything like that, right? Every one person. So if Wendy comments 10 times on Kansas, she only counts as one person. It's not how many comments, it's how many people comment, right? So, and it's about Ladies Off-Road Network, right? So you're not, yeah, it's not all your cousins. <laughs> As Wendy's putting there, like, don't have all your cousins vote and everybody else. It's about who is going to come and who cares that Ladies Off-Road Network comes to your area for three days. And with that, you're going to be able to put those comments in. We'll run it on Instagram and we'll run it on Facebook. So I'll be looking at them uh, independently and then we will add them up. And the people with the most number or the, the location with the most number of people that are most interested will filter to the top. The people, the locations that don't have as much action on them will filter to the bottom. Uh, what's going to happen is I will, I've been thinking about this. I want to guarantee that the five top five locations will 99% be visited. All right. And I say 99%, I need to give myself the 1% for logistics. You guys need to understand that there is some serious logistics to all of this, okay? I should be able to get it all handled and those top five should be nailed no matter what um, because I pretty much hope I already know who the top five are. And then after that, we're going to take that group and I'm going to start sorting down from the top to the bottom. There may be some by the time we get to 10, 11, 12 that I may logistically not be able to do this year, but that doesn't mean that we can't do it next year. Uh, so that is something that I'm really looking forward to. It helps me understand who's out there and who really wants to play and what's going on. There may be also some like, uh, let's take Texas for an example. So there's Dallas and there's Austin and there's Houston and there's all these different towns in Dallas or in Texas. I can't go to all five of them, six of them, like I did this year. We did a whole series in, in Texas, right? A whole week in Texas. I can't do that. So 
which one in Texas is going to rise to the top? You see what I'm saying? That's also going to happen probably in Southern Cal or Northern Cal. Um, there's going to be a couple other areas like um, uh, Florida where we're going to see which one rises to the top because I can't do them all. Is that fair? Um, so hopefully you guys like my idea. I appreciate Wendy for the the poke and saying, I know how much you struggle with this because I do struggle with it because you clearly know I want to go everywhere, but we can't. Ah. Um, so that gives us that opportunity to do eight, 12, uh, 16, 18 different areas, just depending on the logistics and how I can get them to all to fit. Fair enough. Are you guys liking it? Are we good with this? I appreciate that. Um, great idea. Great idea. Totally fair. Uh, here's the next crazy. This is a goal of mine. This is a goal of mine. I'm hoping that I can get these graphics up this week. If I can get these graphics up this week, you're going to have about a week to get the hustle on. All right. I should have told you, in my opinion, where all of them were last night, right? Where they were, what dates they are, how much they are, all that kind of stuff. To me, it should have been done last night. Didn't happen. Couldn't happen. Not in, not in the scene that just went down with everything getting uprooted. Uh, so with that being said, next week is the hustle. I'm going to ask you guys to do the hustle for me on trying to help me figure out where these should be at. Then Christmas day, I'm going to tell you where they're going to be. All right. So as long as foil parts can help me out and make sure that we can get some commitments in those couple days just before Christmas, uh, I will on Christmas day launch up where these, uh, locations are going to be. And I'll even have my awesome family help me out in this. So my mom and dad and brother, this is the first they're hearing about it too. <laughs> so we will all join you on Christmas day and we will announce where these are going to be and we will um, have them available for you to start registering immediately. So <laughs> if Santa brings you a Visa gift card, well, now you can put it to good use, <laughs> right? So that is uh, something to look forward to and something that I really appreciate on that edge. All right, speaking of gifts, remember all these fancy things? So we had our rock slide engineering gift that we gave away. What, what, BFG tires that we gave away, the kicker speaker that we gave away, the Warren winch that we gave away, the high lift kit that we gave away. The question is, are the other three, two still in the mailbox and what's the new one for tonight? But let's move on to more logistics and let's start talking about our East Coast adventure. Ah. I just threw my pen down. All right, our East Coast adventure. Um, this is going to be a blast, ladies. Are you guys ready for this? So the East Coast adventure, by the way, we're in a random parking lot in Arizona. I'm super disappointed that this Christmas tree has not turned its lights on yet. But we are in big red, so we're in the truck. That's how we were able to have everything up right now. Um, yeah, I would roll the window down so you could see a brighter Christmas tree, but it's like 60 degrees out there. It's freezing. <laughs> it's freezing. Um, let's see. So we're talking about the East Coast adventure. Let's set the scene really fast. Last year, we did our very first adventure. It was fun. It was awesome. It was amazing. We worked with TNT Customs and Forex Exploring, and they took the ladies on an amazing Southwest adventure. We left from, uh, from the Overland Expo in Arizona. They went up through Arizona, Utah, all over the place. And then I surprised them at the very end and joined in for the last day. And we had a great last day and I really appreciate the whole group that ended up going. Um, I learned a lot, right? This whole process of Ladies off -road Network is learning because everything is brand new. So I learned a lot with our very first one that we did. One of them was timing. Uh, I noticed we put it next to a holiday weekend. It was the end of the school year for a lot of moms and grandmas for graduations. Uh, so I apologize for all of that. So I also noticed that 
Well, there's a lot of cool adventures out there, and I leaned on Forex Exploring, so that's where the, the location, the adventure, and the time frame came from. So, in our challenge this year in 2019, one of the things that we did was have you guys all write up an adventure, right? Remember all of this funness? So, everybody wrote an adventure that participated in the challenge, and one of the questions was, would you like your adventure considered for 2020? If they said yes, great. If they said no, awesome. No big deal. So, the ones that said yes, then... Uh, they had a picture and a blurb that was printed and those pictures and blurbs got taken to the top 10 weekends. Mm, when was that? In October. Uh, the top 10, I ended up printing or Sherilyn printed all this and got everything ready for us. So uh, Sherilyn got everything ready and highlighted the specific information and we also separated it between East and West because I agreed that I would do two adventures this year, one on the East Coast and one on the West Coast, so people didn't feel like they had to drive so far to separate. Uh, with that, we had, I think it was a total of 33 adventures that we had to consider. Uh, so there's, I don't even remember the numbers, there was like 15 in the West and uh, there's less in the east. There's like 10 in the east and then there was like this weird central group So I kind of put the central in there and said, okay, this could be a wild card So if you didn't like the west and you didn't like the east you could do a, a central instead and it really worked out good Like it was really cool and the ladies the top 10 ladies that read all of them on their way to Johnson Valley This is kind of a side story a squirrel story is I'm like, okay when can they look at these things? And I'm like, oh, I know. The drive out to Johnson Valley, if you kind of know where you're going or you've kind of been places, you can kind of figure it out, right? So I had all of the all of the docks printed. And as I would make strategic turns or getting close to like a strategic turn, I would pass them back out again. I'm like, all right, everybody, make sure that you guys read through these and uh, make sure that you get everything that you like. And so everybody literally, like as I'm getting close to a strategic turn, everybody's heads just went down and like, doo -doo 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 -doo. and so I would take an exit or I would make another turn and we would like go into another location. Yeah, Chris is on here. She's like, oh, I know. And Bonnie, we were totally distracted, right? And so they were all distracted as I would make these turns. They caught on at the end. They'd figured me out at the end, but it was... Uh, we were already there, so it totally worked. <laughs> I know, I know. Tricky. Anyways, uh, the ladies, what they did was every single one of them went through, uh, every single package went through, and then each of the 10 ladies wrote their name next, uh, initialed it, so that we knew that all 10 had been looked at or every all 10 ladies had looked at the one paper and then they put stars next to it if they wanted to go back like they felt like that was going to be one of their top picks okay um then we went through and uh top picked it and they got them all back out again in the evening when we had our excel spreadsheet out and they went through and they put a one two three into the column for each one like okay tell me your top three in the east tell me your top three in the west and then legitimately what the plan was, was then I was going to take those top three and bring it out to the big group and say, okay, here's the three that the top 10 put together. Which one of these three would you like to do? Um, it was so significantly weighed towards one in the East and one in the West. I didn't bring it back out to the group. There was no need to do it. We just needed to make it happen. And so I'm very excited tonight to talk about the East Coast one, uh, which Julie, Miss Julie Fargay, is actually the one who put this adventure together. So congratulations to Julie on that. Uh, this is the image here that she put together that was one of the requests is you had to submit a marketing image for it so this is the image that she put out and it says uh, bring your camera spend three days exploring the natural wonders of the Great Smoky Mountain National Park and surrounding areas bring your 4x4 rivers forests lakes gym hunting gentle hikes four-wheel drive needed mild trails when off-road 
and it's a great smoky mountain national park and surrounding areas is what it says on there since i know you can't read all that small print backwards um so let me read this is her marketing uh this is her marketing paragraph and then i'll get into a little bit more detail okay so her marketing p paragraph uh steeped in steep in history green foliage old growth forest bountiful gemstones densely populated with black bears and synchronized flashing fireflies this is the short list of what you may find in the smokies the great smoky mountains are a mountain range rising along the tennessee north carolina border in the southeastern united states also referred to as smokies the perpetual blue mist or smoke is caused by the weather within the range and the plants and trees are breathing mysterious fascinating and ready to explore the smoky mountain national park is the most visited park in the united states we will spend three days exploring parkways beltways and the roads less traveled there will be opportunities to get out and stretch one's legs traverse streams in your 4x4 vehicle and capture iconic scenery through photography we travel upwards of 6,600 feet in elevation at our highest point with Cinnamon's uh, Kligman's Dome, offering a 360 degree view. The southern end of our journey will take us through the town of Robbinsville, a town for its hair raising tail of the dragon roadway. With 318 curves and 11 miles, it has been deemed as America's number one motorcycle and sports car road which we're gonna make it a four by four road as well. <laughs> All right, so this was her uh, paragraph and that was her marketing deal. Um, so now in for the detail. So I worked with this uh, program that she put together. There's a few things that I'm gonna rotate on it and there's a few things I'm gonna add and we're gonna kind of, you know, spice it up just a little bit into the Charlene world, into the Ladies Offer Network world which I don't think she'll be mad at me for, we'll see. Um, and I don't have everything 100% locked right now, but I will tell you, these are the dates. So the East Coast Adventure is April 27th to May 1st. It's a Monday to a Thursday, Friday. All right, Monday to a Thursday, Friday. We're gonna start, you're gonna fly in, if you're flying, you're gonna head towards Knoxville, Tennessee. That's our N. Our very first day is gonna be in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. That's gonna be on Monday, so we're gonna meet in Gatlinburg. Uh, and then our out will actually be from Nashville. Um, the Smoky Mountains are gonna be beautiful in April. Beautiful in that April-May range. It's gonna be all about the wildflowers. Wildflowers. Uh, wildflowers, so we're gonna get a breathtaking piece as we drive through at that time of the year. The Roaring Fork Motor Trail, which is what she has us going on as well, is amazing. There's a ton of stops. Uh, we're gonna see all kinds of history. It's thick and it's beautiful. So I was looking at a bunch of things that are along that and I love it. We're gonna do a little bit of hiking to some amazing spots. We're gonna go up, up, up and away. We're gonna do a couple other things and we're even going to go mining so we're going to get some mining we're going to give our hand at it who knows somebody is going to come up with either a ruby or a sapphire i hope <laughs> i hope i hope um then we're going to do a light trail ride on top of it so we're going to enjoy some dirt and some entertainment uh, and have a little bit of fun from that edge as well with some of my friends that are nearby she has it set up as hotel nights. I'm actually going to be looking into Airbnbs a little bit more. I looked into it today. I feel confident that we can do that. I'd much rather do it uh, that way if you guys are down with it. I like that atmosphere a lot better where we're all hanging out together. We're all eating food together instead of going out to restaurants every night. Um, again, I know there's some personal preferences in there, but you can also pitch a tent in the backyard if that is your so-called scene um, and come in and take a shower, right? So we have that going for us on this trip. 
I do suggest that if you have, uh, if you're on the East Coast and you're going to bring your vehicle, that's amazing. And I would like for you to team up with ladies that maybe don't have a vehicle, are currently a passenger, or are coming from the West Coast and don't want to drive their vehicle out and so they can fly in. Or we do have an opportunity for you to rent a Jeep, but this is not a loop anymore. She set it up originally as a loop and it's not anymore. So uh, if you rent it, it will be a little bit of a challenge to get it back to where you need to get it back to. So I'd really prefer that you kind of work with each other and doing the who's bringing a vehicle and who has a, sp a spare seat. Um, our Friday at the end of the... At at the end of the week, we will actually be landing into Nashville. So I'm going to tell you right now, one of the locations, as much as I'm telling, <laughs> you know, 10 minutes ago, I said, okay, it's going to depend on what you guys tell me where you want us to go. I'm also going to tell you there's some logistics to this, right? Just like I said. And so there's certain locations that we're definitely going for the three days. One of them is going to be Nashville and it's going to be this weekend, that May 1st weekend. So on Friday, we are going to start our Nashville event, our three-day Nashville event, and I would really, really, really love for you all to stay with us and do the Nashville tourist activity in the morning and stay for Friday night's Nashville dinner where we can celebrate, celebrate you, celebrate the adventure, you can tell your stories, you can be a part of that scene uh, because everybody has just watched you for the whole week be a part of that adventure. So I think that that would be really, really cool. If you then decide on uh, Saturday to peel out and go home, I'm totally with you. We've been on the trail for a week and I'm with you on that. I just ask that hopefully you stay for the Friday night activities and then peel out on Saturday and head home so that you can be home and back to work that next Monday. You have a different set of scene going on than the girls that are coming in for the Nashville event. All right, does that make sense? So that's how we're trying to do that and end that weekend uh, with a big bang. Um, Price and sizing. Price I'm going to work on because I didn't get uh, a, a very, very far with the Airbnb and all of that type of thing. So I need to do a little bit more pricing on everything so that I can make sure that we're in, in task with all of that. Uh, it will be inclusive. I believe in inclusiveness. So it's not like it's something where all of a sudden you're having to buy your dinners here, buy this or buy that. Uh, you will be in charge of your own fuel. So you and your co-driver will split the fuel or however you want to play your fuel. I can't uh, negotiate your fuel for you and every vehicle is a little bit different so that's on you um, but the the housing the food the activities everything will be inclusive into the price that we put together for you the quantity I'd like to keep it 10 to 15 vehicles at most uh, we're not doing a huge trail ride or anything that's super aggressive so I don't really mind going up into the 15 number but I don't need it to get a whole lot bigger than that, all right? So that 15 number is going to be where I want to sit on the vehicle side, but we have co-driver seats. So co-driver seats, ladies, come on in and grab that co-driver seat. This is not one of those events for guys, sorry. So this is going to be a girl event. Uh, if you are not a driver, that's fine. There's plenty of co-driver seats available for you. If you don't have a vehicle right now, it does not matter. There's plenty of co-driver seats available for you. So drivers, um, make sure that as you're registering and I'll get us a, a space going in Apricot so that you all can converse and make sure that everybody has that piece put together for you. All right. Um, so that's going to be April 27th to May 1st. I will throw it up on the calendar tomorrow morning. Our, our names and our video and all of this won't go up until late tonight. I guess Gabe just popped on, so I guess he made it to dinner. <laughs> I'll be in in a minute. <laughs> I told him, I'm like, well, you can always come and find me. I'll be near a Christmas tree or I'll be in the truck and you can just pop into the passenger seat of the truck and there'll be some random dude that just jumps in right uh, so that is that awesome are you excited about this I think this is gonna be a lot of fun so I'm gonna keep working this down just a little bit and again remembering what I said is on Friday 
the two adventures and the convention will open for you guys to put your hundred dollar minimum deposit non-refundable deposit down uh if you want to because we will oh and probably the wilderness first seed too because we, it will be number related right like there's only so many people that can go so you'll want to make sure that you get your name on that list all right good great um i know what i forgot last night's t-shirt winner last night t-shirt winner Hey, let's say congratulations to Erica Ramos. Erica from Arizona. Uh, you are the t-shirt winner from last night. And I love watching all of your guys' comments going by. I'm trying to grab some of them as they go through. But remember, you guys, I do read them all and I appreciate that. And then I will tell you who the t-shirt winner is tomorrow night. Uh, tomorrow night, we're going to do two gift bags because I forgot to grab the gift bag on the way out. I'm going to blame that on Carol because I was on the phone with her. And now we are going to go to the mailbox, which is going to get awkward because it's kind of trapped down there, but we'll make it work. Uh, first things first, though. Guess what? We know one thing for sure. This one is not in the mailbox anymore. So congratulations to Devon who is the Rugged Radios winner. Congratulations. Yay! Isn't this exciting? So Devon is now the winner of the Rugged Radio kit, which is super awesome. 60 watts. This is a like a chase truck style opportunity right here. So love it. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, so congratulations to her. Now, I'm going to reach in and see what is next. I don't know. This mailbox is way bigger than you guys realize. And mom, the bow is on it, by the way. <clears throat> oh, and it smells like the Christmas tree. Remember how I said I put one of those Christmas tree things in there? Yeah. So my truck is now going to smell like a Christmas tree. All right. <sighs> good news, bad news. What do you want first? The good news or the bad news? Good news or bad news? Which one do you want first? How are we doing? Um, hmm. Good news or bad news? Good news? Bad news? Bad news? Good news? Anybody? Hello? Okay. There they are. Good news, bad news. So we want the good news first. We want the bad news first. <laughs> we want the bad news first. The bad news is Factor 55 is still in the mailbox. I know. Factor 55 is still in the mailbox. But the good news is it's in the mailbox because Elisa Burke is amazing. So Elisa Burke... Um, emailed me and said and messaged me and said Charlene I already have all the factor 55 gear on my winch so I would much rather you put this back into the mailbox and let somebody else be successful with it than me take it how awesome is that so super thankful to somebody like Elisa Burke like again that just goes back to what we were talking about at the beginning of the live tonight and how amazing you guys are as a group um, so factor 55 is back in thanks to Elisa Burke she's the one that said let's do this yep love it um, and I didn't forget Grandma Salad Bowl. So Grandma Salad Bowl is here. I'm a little sketch to mix it up very much because, oh, there goes one right there. All right, that's the winner. The one that just flew out, and hopefully I can find it. Gosh darn it, that's what I was afraid of. Nope, not the winner. Because I can't, I'm not gonna dig. I'm not gonna turn the light on. All right, here we go. We're gonna get this one right here. So back to Factor 55 and California. All right, so San Ramon, Sarah Hanna. Sarah Hanna from San Ramon, California. Uh, she was just at our trail training class. Her and her mom 
and her sister are all big ladies off our network members. Uh, so it is the factor 55. So Sarah has 23 hours to get back to me and say, yes, yes, yes. We want the factor 55. Pretty awesome stuff. All right. Then new for tonight. New for tonight is actually really exciting. Um, you know, I love going to the off-road expos because I always get to see something new. It never fails. I always see something new while we're out there and meet some new people. And uh, thanks to Rhonda, who is a Ladies Off-Road Network member, she introduced me to a new company. And uh, she was telling, she's been telling me about this company for the last few weeks. And I'm like, Sure, I'd love to see their product, love to see what's going on. She's like, all right, they're going to be at the expo this weekend. So I'm walking through the expo before it's even open on Friday, and I see this product, and I text her, and I'm like, yes, we need to talk. This is absolutely something that we need as part of our circle. Like this, I know the ladies are going to love this, and so we definitely need to get it going. Uh, this is something that crosses into the overland market, into our RV market, into our camping situations, into our garages, into everything, right? And I am just so excited. And then I got to meet the guys that are running the company and um, just a great group. So with that being said, now that we've like drug it on long enough, right? <laughs> uh, a new product and a new company to you all. It's called Sea Devil. It's called Sea Devil. And what it is... Um, Shoot, this is kind of hard to read because I had to cheat just a little bit. So it's a balloon light. It's a 150 watt balloon light. It's 110 volts. Uh, gives off about a 40 foot radius of light and, and a 360 degree scene here. So you know how most lights just go one way. Uh, I carried one out. It's only six pounds. It's not heavy at all. So it's not like it's some big bulky thing that you got to pull around. It's like an inflatable balloon. So that light comes up and then it diffuses the light and it pushes it all over the place. It does come with a remote control and so it's dimmable. So it doesn't have to be super bright. It can go up and down as far as brightness goes. Um, and it also comes with a couple different mounts. So this is the tripod mount. And then they had another mount where you could actually hang it. So like if you had an easy up or you had something else, uh, you could actually hang it and it comes down. So there's a three year warranty on it. This light right here is valued at $450. Like this is big business ladies. So it's a very cool thing. Uh, they make them bigger. Uh, they make one size smaller that was, would be great for just like a small camping zone. And then they make them much bigger too for big pits or um, construction zones. I went to their Facebook page today, uh, Sea Devil. Make sure you guys all go there when we're done, okay? And like their page. They need some likes on their Facebook page. So let's go make a difference and do that for them on their Facebook page, so Sea Devil. And then... Also, today, I got a text from Rhonda that they set us up with a 10% off coupon code. So can somebody write this in for me? It's L-O-N 2019. Rhonda, is that right? Gosh dang it. Is it 2019 or 19? It's 2019. I knew I should have written it down. L-O-N 2019 is what we're going with right now. And uh, I'll put it into the into the top once I get offline and can actually see the text again. But this is a really big deal. So that's two, you'll be able to get 10% off any one of their lights as well. And that's at cdevil.com. They do uh, sell them direct. So pretty exciting. I think it was all caps on the LON. I do agree with that as well. So pretty exciting here from that, uh, from this perspective and working with a new company this week so that we can show it. Yay! I know. I'm so excited that everybody's seeing this and liking it as well. So I'm glad that you guys are on the same plan as I am. I think this is really, really cool. And maybe when we're back in the office tomorrow, I'll set it up by the tree and you'll see literally how big it is. Um, I had to kind of do our graphic a little bit different. As you can tell, it's not as whitewashed as the other ones are because it just kind of faded into the background. So that's why it's a little bit different. But 
It's very, very awesome. So I'm excited to work with Sea Devil and give you guys the opportunity as well to grab one so that you and I can talk all about it and tell everybody how awesome they are when we're out doing what we do. And it's 110 too, so you do you would have to run off a generator. It's not like it would run off of a battery or something. And this is gonna be our winner right here, this one. All right, are you guys ready? Where's that drum roll? Where is that drum roll? Oh good, Rhonda, you're on here. Is it LON 2019? Hopefully you have confirmed that for me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And man, back to California again. California is killing it, ladies. I don't know what's up with that. Uh, Azusa, California. Jennifer Rays. Jennifer Rays also took our class this year. So Jennifer Rays, you are the winner of the Sea Devil. If oh, it's LON 19. Okay, LON 19. Thank you, Rhonda. I did see that just now. Um, so Jennifer Rays from Azusa, California, you are the winner of the Sea Devil light that we have going on. It's a 150 watt light. So you now have 23 hours to get in touch with me to tell me that you would like it. Yay, yay. And in the meantime, we will see what we have going on tomorrow. All right. We still have four more days of giveaways. How crazy is that? Um, with that being said, congratulations to everybody. What questions do you have for me tonight? Maybe more specific to the adventure side of things. I'll answer what I can. And then I will come back with more answers tomorrow night as we talk about the West Coast adventure. So anybody have any questions? Um, let's see, where are we at? So anybody have any questions on the adventure or on the couple things we changed tonight? Oh my gosh, there's so much paper around here. It's ridiculous. Um, I'm now looking. So we have the Battle of the Towns, Cookies and Cans got canned, but this Friday we need to get in the, uh, January networkings and the wilderness first aid. So anything you guys got now would be a great time to ask. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to go head in and have dinner with Gabe. Gabe, if you guys haven't heard his name before, uh, he uh, he helps me with all of our production, a lot of our production. So when we were doing Bauer Power Hour, he's the one that went with me and did the video and then edited it, edited it and made it look all beautiful and fancy. Um, so he does a lot of work with me and he also owns the Craigslisticon and Craigslisticon is the orange Jeep that you'll see in a lot of our videos and a lot of our pictures. So he owns that and we built that through uh, Bauer Power Hour as well. So good friend of Lady Software Network. He goes on rides with us all the time when we're here in Arizona and has a great time with us too. So yay. Uh, anyways. Any questions or a lot of you are saying good night, good night, good night. Everybody has something else to do too. It's a fast Monday night, isn't it? <laughs> but we got a lot more to go over the next few days. Anybody else? Did you say how to sign for the wilderness? No. So I have not um, got that locked, locked enough to sign up for it. But we will have it um, by Friday because that will be one that we need to have just like a certain number of people can go. So I want to make sure that those all roll out at the right time. All right. And that will be the two adventures, the East Coast Adventure, West Coast Adventure, the convention and, um, and the first aid will roll out on Friday because it's a, there'll be a, a cut in numbers of people. And then the rest, when we do our uh, battle of the towns, hopefully we should have all of those decided and figured out by next Friday. And on Christmas day, we'll go live with what those are. And those will then be open on Christmas day for you guys to sign up for. All right. Yes. What did you think Ro and Lori? Did you like the East coast adventure? Um, West Coast, West Coast. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. All right, everybody's peeling out. 
Good. So you guys don't have a lot of questions tonight. I'm down with that. <laughs> I'm not upset with that. But I am upset with this Christmas tree. What in the world happened? All right, here you go. See how pretty it is without... I have tinted windows. So there's the Christmas tree, all fancy. And now it's going to get cold in here. <laughs> but the hot air just also, like, masked the window. So maybe I should have had the, the window down the whole time. Um, all right. Everybody is saying goodbye. Yay, yay, yay. Have a great night. I appreciate you guys all very much. All right. We'll say our goodbyes. And we will peel out until tomorrow night. Same time different place. Good plan? <laughs> Good plan. All right. Good night, everyone.